Hello everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video about the 30 series launch and the SRIOV debate that surrounded it. Many people seem to be confusing SRIOV and pass-through in this debate and uh, misunderstanding what exactly each of those represents. So I would like to clarify that in this video. When talking about direct pass-through, a PCI Express device can be assigned to a virtual machine. When that device is assigned to a virtual machine, the host isn't able to use that device or another virtual machine on that same host is not able to use that device either. That can be a graphics card, USB controller, network card, anything. If you try to pass through an NVIDIA consumer GPU, you're almost guaranteed to end up with error 43 when you try to install the drivers. It's a fairly easy error to work around, but it's there. NVIDIA Quadros don't suffer from this issue and you should be able to install the drivers just fine. When it comes to AMD GPUs, some of them work just fine, but some of them suffer from a reset bug. So if you try to reboot the virtual machine, you might have to reboot the host itself, unless you employ one of the workarounds. Now, SRIOV is a completely different beast. None of the consumer GPUs support it, except for Intel's iGPUs from, I believe, fifth generation up. They do have GVT-G, which allows you pretty much to do exactly that. Now, what is that? What exactly is SRIOV? SRIOV allows a device, like in this case, NVIDIA Quadro RTX 8000, to present itself as 32 Quadro 8000s. These 32 virtual graphics cards, you would be able to assign them to 32 different virtual machines. Now, 32 virtual machines, each with their own GPU, that sounds great. Those 32 virtual machines would be able to enjoy the benefits of GPU acceleration. So, workloads such as gaming, maybe some 3D work, design, they would be able to... Actually, those virtual machines would be usable for that. So what many people don't realize though is most of these GPUs don't have any outputs except for the Quadros. So in order to take advantage of those 32 3D accelerated virtual machines, you would have to have some sort of a, either a thin client or a virtual desktop client or, uh, you know, for us on KVM, looking glass would work. But in order to take advantage of that GPU accelerated virtual machine, you need either another machine, be it a thin client or maybe your phone with something running on it, or if you are on that one PC, you can use looking glass and then just have multiple windows, each displaying the virtual machine. But you cannot just huddle around the computer with five monitors and everybody gets their own monitor. That's generally not how it works. So that's something to take into consideration when thinking about this. Another issue with these GPUs, especially with NVIDIA's implementation, is that there is licensing costs. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so right here you have those different types of GPUs and what they support. This is a virtual D GPU type and you need a license. So every single one of them needs a license. So if NVIDIA decided to implement something like this on the consumer side, it would be very interesting to see whether they decide to keep their licensing or they would just open it up for everyone to just freely access and use. One interesting use case would be to run that one single GPU for the host. And when you run a guest virtual machine, you would simply use Looking Glass and access your guest through the monitor connected to the host, to the same GPU. Well, if we look right here, for example, on this Tesla M60, it shows us that you basically have to have all the virtual GPUs have to be exactly the same. So you would be more or less wasting half of the GPU unless it's implemented differently for the host, which is pretty much doing nothing, only displaying whatever 
that's happening on the virtual machine. So that's one thing to take into consideration, depending on how they implement it. But what's probably going to happen is, as they said, it's not going to be implemented on the consumer GPUs at all. It has never been. There is Whenever there is a new GPU release, people always get their hopes up. Same thing happened with the Radeon 7, then a Radeon 5700, and it will probably happen with Radeon, whatever the new generation will be called, 6800. And uh, so this technology generally tends to stay with the enterprise sector. One interesting question is though, when uh, Intel releases their new GPUs, if ever, Will those support SRIOV or GVT-G? Because their current iGPUs do support it. You can actually do that on an Intel iGPU. It's not a very powerful graphics card, so there's that. But with more powerful hardware that supports it, it would be very interesting. And considering that there is history of actually supporting it, we might want to keep our fingers crossed for Intel to actually implement it. So if you want to try this without having to spend any money, I'll link my guide to GVT-G on Ubuntu. And if you want to try pass-through, you don't need to spend money on the new GPU. Whether it's a new gen or the last gen, they all work the same. You will have to do workarounds if you want to use a consumer GPU. And that would be that for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.